A family purchases a robotic helper to keep up with their house chores, not knowing that the synth they bought already has a past. A lone worker carries a bag through a large room filled with standing bodies. Although they look human, they're called synths, or synthetics, which are robots that consumers can purchase to help in everyday tasks. As the worker leaves, all the synths are at ease and are powered off, except for one who looks up to the moon. Elsewhere, Joe Hawkins struggles to juggle work and household chores. His wife, Laura, is away at court, and she's staying there longer than expected. With her gone, the house becomes a mess. Overwhelmed, Joe tells his youngest daughter Sophie to come with him, as he's set on purchasing a synth. Later on, Joe finalizes the paperwork to get his synth. The salesperson assures him that he made a good choice, but he can return it in 30 days if it fails his expectations. With this, the salesperson reveals the synth, and Sophie gets excited. Joe shakes the synth's hand to transfer his primary information, and with this, it officially becomes his property. When they get home, Joe's son, Toby, gets struck by the synth's beauty. However, his eldest daughter, Matilda, remains unimpressed, and sarcastically laughs when she finds that Joe didn't inform their mom about getting a synth. Suddenly, the synth asks what everyone would like for dinner. Joe chuckles because he's finally relieved from that task. Meanwhile, Laura decides to go home early. On her way, she realizes that their community is filled with synths. At home, Matilda and her friend, Harun, make fun of their neighbor's synth. Suddenly, Laura arrives by the front gate, instantly pissing off Matilda. Once she enters the house, Laura gets surprised that everything's in order. Sophie and Toby greet her, but Matilda barely shows any enthusiasm. Suddenly, the synth walks into the room and greets Laura, much to her surprise. Seeing her reaction, Joe signals his wife to talk privately. Laura is upset that he didn't consult her about it, so she wants Joe to return the synth. However, Joe argues that she's barely around, so they need help around the house. With no choice, Laura walks back into the living room and asks the kids what the synth's name will be. Sophie suggests Anita, and everyone agrees. With this, Joe confirms the name through the tablet, and Laura asks the synth for her name as confirmation. When she replies that she's Anita Hawkins, Laura becomes unnerved. Unbeknownst to the couple, Anita was part of a group of runaway synths. Five weeks earlier, she hid in the woods with her lover Leo and their friends Fred, Max, and Niska. Halfway through their journey, Niska was about to run out of power, so Leo told everyone to make camp while he and Max looked for more fuel. Suddenly, something moved in the bushes, so Leo alerted everyone to run if it was the man they were avoiding. Fortunately, it was just a fox. After this, the group split up to do their respective tasks. Hours later, Leo and Max returned to the camp, but no one was there. Just then, they saw a group of men carrying Fred, Niska, and Anita into a van. Leo tried to run after them, but failed to save his friends. At present, Laura unpacks her luggage and pulls out a photo album. She checks to ensure that no one's around before hiding it in the closet. Suddenly, Anita enters, offers to unpack her luggage, but Laura refuses. Meanwhile, Leo goes to a junker shop and interrogates a man named Salim Sadiq about Anita's location. Sadiq claims that Silas Kapek, another junker, bought Anita. As they head out to find Silas, Max says that Anita might be reprogrammed or destroyed, but Leo refuses to accept this. However, Max points out that only Anita hasn't contacted them since they got separated. The next day, Anita prepares breakfast for the Hawkings. When Matilda orders Anita around, Laura reminds her that her presence doesn't mean the kids can be lazy. She also scolds Anita for wiping down the already clean table. To lighten the mood, Joe jokes about Anita having microchips for breakfast, and Anita laughs too much, even when everyone else has stopped. Elsewhere, Dr. George Milliken is visited by a health service caseworker. They want him to replace his synth with an upgraded one, but he firmly refuses. When the caseworker leaves, George opens the closet and tells his synth, Odie, that their game of hide-and-seek is over. He's had Odie with his late wife, Mary, and losing the synth would mean losing his wife again. At the Hawkins, Anita witnesses Matilda scold her mother for not being present in their lives. That night, she watches Sophie as she sleeps. When Laura sees this, she tells the synth never to do it again because it's her job as a mother. After this, she tells Joe that she feels replaced by the synth, but he explains that he bought Anita so she could spend more time with him. Despite this, Laura still doesn't understand her husband. The next day, Leo locates Fred and arranges a plan for him to escape the agricultural factory he's been working in. However, the authorities discover a phone in his charging station, proving that he's a sentient synth. Fred runs away but gets tased. Outside, Leo realizes that Fred isn't coming, so he leaves with Max. Meanwhile, George goes grocery shopping with Odie, but he malfunctions and begins dropping jars on the floor. A sales lady tries to stop him, but he accidentally punches her. Because of this, the security guard pins him down and turns him off. At the Hawkins, Matilda tests Anita's reflexes by shooting her with a toy gun. Being a technology enthusiast, she wants to figure out the synth's capabilities, so she also tests her pain tolerance. However, Anita stops her 
her and asks why she wants to test her, piquing Matilda's curiosity. Just then, Joe and Laura confront Matilda about her failing grades, so Anita leaves. Matilda justifies that the world has no use for her skills because whatever she does, a synth can do better. Elsewhere, Anita observes a picture of Laura and a baby, triggering memories from what seems to be her past. At the grocery store, detectives Karen Voss and Pete Drummond assess the situation with Odie. Pete discovers that the synth is over six years old and requires an upgrade. Although George pleads to keep Odie, the detective insists that he gets scrapped since it hurts someone. When George goes home, he desperately tries to prove that Odie isn't defective. However, the synth glitches and struggles to remember Mary. Meanwhile, Pete goes home to his wife, Jill, who's receiving physical therapy from the synth, Simon. As she recovers from an accident, Pete feels uncomfortable with this, but he knows that Jill needs it. At the Hawkins, Laura realizes that Sophie favors Anita over her. She reminds Anita never to touch her daughter, but the synth explains that they're not even permitted to touch humans without permission. Elsewhere, Leo and Max head to a brothel where Niska works. Leo decides to go by himself and immediately finds Niska's booth. Once they're alone, they warmly embrace each other. Niska prepares to leave, but Leo can't take her with him just yet. Considering the conflict with Fred, it'll be dangerous to blow her cover now. Leo is concerned about the group's safety, and it doesn't help that they have no contact with Mia, which is Anita's true name. Niska is disappointed that she has to stay, but has no choice but to comply. She then tells him to press the button to leave since it requires human body heat, revealing that Leo is human, not a sentient synth like them. Fred gets taken to the laboratory, where a scientist named Hobbs talks to Robert, the owner of the facility. Robert wants to dissect the synth for study, but Hobbs argues that they should focus on finding the other sentient synths. Hobbs insists that David Elster, the man who created the synths, wanted to create machine life. He notes that a mathematician once described an inevitable future where machines can improve and reproduce themselves without humans. This will be the moment when humans become inferior to machines. Hobbes argues that humans have become dependent on synths, and if David made sentient ones, then the synths can make more of them. If that happens, they will refuse to be enslaved. Meanwhile, George prepares to destroy Odie himself instead of recycling him. Before he does, however, the synth suddenly remembers Mary, making George sigh in relief. That evening, Anita helps Laura cook. As the synth takes the dish out of the oven, Sophie comes running to kiss Anita goodnight. While avoiding the child, Anita accidentally burns Laura instead. She finds this strange since synths never cause accidents or injuries to their owners. As the family watches TV that night, Joe finds Anita's 18 plus manuals and hides them. The show discusses the idea of synths replacing manual labor so humans can pursue other livelihoods. Laura notices Anita is watching as well, but Matilda turns the TV off, tired of the discussion. Later that night, Laura hears the back door open, so she checks it out. To her surprise, she sees Anita staring at the moon. Anita expresses how beautiful the moon is, which sounds odd to Laura. Elsewhere, Max wonders if they'll ever find Mia. Leo replies that he will because they love each other. At the brothel, Niska endures another night of being used by random men. As the night progresses, Anita watches Sophie while she sleeps. Once again, she gets flashbacks of her past when she got trapped in a car underwater. After this, Anita carries the sleeping Sophie in her arms and kisses her while carrying her down the street. The following morning, Laura goes to Sophie's room and finds her daughter's wet pajamas. However, Sophie insists that she didn't have an accident. After this, Laura goes to the kitchen and finds Anita's soaked shoes. At the laboratory, Hobbs peers through Fred's mind and sees a recurring memory of Anita swimming underwater. Meanwhile, Pete tries to meet the needs of his disabled wife. Despite his efforts, Simon is better at the job, and even Jill says that the synth knows what she needs. Elsewhere, Leo and Max try to find Silas. Max questions his existence and wonders if it were better if he wasn't conscious. However, Leo replies that their late father made them for a reason, which isn't to be a mere design but to be family. Hearing this paints a smile on Max's face. They reach Silas' workshop, but before they enter, Leo reminds Max to hide his true nature. Leo uses Sadiq's name to enter and says they were sent to find Mia. Silas chuckles and says he remembers her, but withholds information because of Sadiq's debt. Silas insists on taking Max to pay off Sadiq's debt. When Leo refuses, they beat him up. However, Leo gains momentum and holds something sharp to Silas' throat, forcing him to reveal information about Mia. Silas reveals that she was brought in weeks ago but was corrupted since she was fighting and kicking. For her to be sold, Silas gave her a full system wipe and a new personality. The information distracts Leo, so Silas escapes his clutches and beats him again. Max can no longer stand and watch, so he hits Silas' goon. Leo screams at Max to run, but Silas has already figured that he's a sentient synth. Silas pursues him, so Leo runs to the balcony and waits for 
for Max to exit. Left with no more strength, Leo lets himself fall into Max's arms, who's waiting below, then they flee. Meanwhile, the caseworker revisits George's house with the upgraded synth, Vera. George hides Odie and says he recycled him. With this, the caseworker leaves Vera with him. She and George don't get along since Vera is a replacement for institutionalization. Just then, Odie knocks on the window, so George distracts Vera by pretending to be in pain. At school, Matilda and Harun abduct a school janitorial synth so she can test her hacking skills. However, the program fails, and the synth notifies the school board. Meanwhile, Pete begins to hate Simon. The innocent synth makes him some sandwiches to take to work, but he purposely leaves them behind. Laura receives a call about Matilda's misconduct. When she gets there, the head teacher threatens to expel her daughter. However, Laura points out that they don't have hard proof that Matilda did it, so she leaves with her daughter. Once they get outside, she tells Matilda to meet her in town after school to go shopping. Before meeting Laura, Matilda hangs out with Harun. They both have issues with their parents, so they understand each other. Suddenly, the two share a kiss. While shopping, Laura uses this chance to talk to her daughter privately. Matilda admits that she tried to hack the school's synth, so Laura just asks her not to do it to Anita. She asks what Matilda thinks of Anita, but she just complains that her mother used to say they'll never get a synth since it'll make them lazy, but now they have one, and she seems okay with it. Elsewhere, Kate and Pete receive a call about Silas. When they get there, Silas taunts Pete, so he gets pinned to the car. Because of this, Karen pulls Pete to the side, scolding him for his impulsive behavior. Pete explains that the synths are ruining their lives and giving humans lesser purpose. At the brothel, Niska gets disinfected after being used, then is only given six minutes to prepare for the next client. In her booth, she screams in anger, but no sound comes from her lips. Max and the heavily injured Leo are still on the run. When they return to their hideout, they discover that Hop's team is looking for them. Because of this, they leave their things behind and escape. At the Hawkins, Laura notices Anita acting odd, so she confronts the synth, only to discover that she's holding a spider. Being an arachnophobe, Laura accuses Anita of knowingly scaring her, but the synth promises never to forget that she dislikes spiders. Still, Laura gets more paranoid about the thought of Anita's consciousness. Joe finds this annoying and insists that Anita is a mere machine. Meanwhile, Vera gets too strict on George, and threatens to tell the agency see if he refuses to cooperate. George discovers that he's not Vera's primary user, so he can't alter her settings. He once contributed to creating the synths, but what he sees now is a disappointment. Just then, Odie switches the lights on and off in the shed where he's hiding. Before Vera could notice, George pretends to go to sleep so she could go to her charging port. Once the coast is clear, he visits Odie and tells him to go into energy saving mode. Suddenly, Vera follows George to the shed, but luckily, he's already hidden Odie. While everyone's asleep, Toby goes downstairs to get some water, but his eyes land on Anita, who's in her charging port. He feels the urge to touch the synth's chest, but Anita suddenly activates, saying that she has to report any physical contact to Joe, her primary user. Thankfully, no contact was made, and Toby sighs in relief. In the brothel, Niska meets a new client. He's an old man who seems shy in expressing his request. Niska encourages him to be transparent, but to her surprise, he wants her to act like a scared child. Unable to take it anymore, Niska refuses. This angers the man, so he chokes her. However, all the pent-up rage causes her to fight back, and she chokes the man to death. Niska figures that there's no other choice but to escape, so she quickly dresses herself and leaves. The woman by the front desk stops her, but Niska threatens her with a knife, and she passes out. Before leaving, she cuts her nape and takes out a chip. The next morning, Max realizes that Leo is dying, so he inserts a charging device into a light bulb socket and pulls out a wire under Leo's lacerated skin. Once he connects this to the charging device, Leo instantly becomes alert, revealing that he's a synth-human hybrid. At the Hawkins, Matilda notices a synth approaching Anita by the street. The synth asks why she doesn't share, but Anita walks away. She reports this to Laura, confirming that Anita is weird. Synths usually share data upon contact with other synths, but Anita seems defective. When Matilda leaves, Laura interrogates Anita, asking if she took Sophie outside a few days back. Anita denies this, but Laura thinks she's lying. Suddenly, Anita claims that she will always keep Sophie safe. This is the last straw for Laura, so she calls the company to return Anita. While she's occupied, Sophie cries upstairs because she had a nightmare. Anita instantly goes to the girl without Laura noticing. Sophie tells Anita to cuddle her, and when she does, she gets flashbacks of her memory of when she was underwater. Just then, Laura sees this, so she screams at Anita to let go of her daughter and get in the car. Sophie refuses to send Anita away, but Anita explains that she must obey her mother. Once they get to the car, Anita asks Laura where she's taking her. She simply responds, back. With this, Anita stares at the distance and smiles. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.